And it's a fantastic time to be a Dota fan. The meta has just created a wide array of pickups and obviously a fantastic set of games coming out from all of the teams. We, I mean, pretty much there's been no team that hasn't done at least some sort of game or some sort of fight that hasn't been just very, very entertaining. The storylines are real. It's just some real excellent stuff. And well, for this particular matchup, like you said, Arrow Gaming, Ten they are down. Remaining. They might be even out. But, you know, you still want to have Five a strong showing. Remaining. You have a fan base to work for, a lot of people who just appreciate good quality Dota. Maybe you have some close friends in one of the other teams and you're looking to try to help them out. And if you can knock off a win and go against Navi, it might help out some others. So who really knows what the motives might be for Arrow Gaming? Hopefully they can bring a strong performance though and some entertaining Dota. And for Navi, very, very important game. Let's see how they decide to pull it out. Our last game that we had the opportunity to cast, they did pull out that very devastating Wisp Tiny Cabo going against Team Liquid. So they have definitely had a very exhausting day thus far. Yeah, they, they, they've been picking a lot of interesting stuff in the past couple of drafts as well. They started off going with a lot of Skyrath, I believe, on the side of Navi, and they've since then have kind of fallen back. They don't really want to take it too often, and and that's fair. They maybe haven't had the success they were looking for, and like you just said, they go straight for the IO tiny combo. Um, I mean, he called it. I mean, it's just so good, uh, especially when Kuroki and Dendi play. I mean, together in that mid lane, we saw Kuro mm -hmm. with some great relocates, obviously overcharged early on, and Dendi getting some farm. It's fantastic, obviously, at initiating, getting some toss avalanche combos and going from there, and just getting that early Aghanim Scepter as well. So, not a surprise that they go for this. They left the aisle wide open. Um, Arrow Gaming have the Naga Siren, yes, so they have something to fall back remaining. on, but um, you could theoretically put so much pressure on Arrow early on that this Naga might not even matter here. Yeah, there, there's got to be a time when Naga needs to reach that He's pinnacle point and then she becomes a bit problem. A great example was when they had the opportunity to see, uh, I believe it was Narvi or you know, Navi US going up against, I believe what, IG? Maybe it was IG. I'm, a, I'm trying to, it's rattling my brain right now when they managed to play their own Naga Siren and just wither them out in the end. So, you know, it, it, it could definitely get the job done if you get to that point. But with this big combo coming out from Navi, and they have no shame in giving away, like, how their draft is going to go. For a lot of teams, they like to pick up more flexible heroes during the draft and just kind of hold on to their strategy. But no, not Navi in this one. They have the opportunity to grab up that Wisp and they'll do so. And they just hit it right up with the typical peanut butter and jelly style combo of that Tony. So, and for Arrow Gaming, they fire right back. They grab up their own Doom. This could work out relatively nicely for them if they can get some certain amount of lockdown. But, you know, we'll see what they want to do as far as supports. One hero that does pop into my mind that we haven't seen a whole lot of that I think works nicely against the IO would be a Disruptor. Yeah, I mean, Disruptor has its place, but a lot of the players, and you were talking about this earlier, they just there's too many people that carry BKBs. Tiny's going to be one of them, obviously. Or rather, um, not, not necessarily Naga. Or excuse me, um, sorry. Um, no, yeah, absolutely. Disruptor would work well against the IO and the Tiny, obviously. But the problem is Tiny's going to get a BKB IO. Obviously not, but still at the same point. Taking on that IO has been kind of uh, an important process, I think. Getting him killed first so that he can't relocate and send back the Tiny after he relocates and jumps on somebody. So uh, that's pretty important to note. What I did want to talk about a little bit is that the Bat Rider gets banned now. That's actually really smart. Mm -hmm. Phonic was playing it earlier and played really well. Um, had a fantastic game. Um, also important to note is that they like to go with the solo safe lane. Um, Havost Centaur. They do that from time to time. In fact, the last time, the last two times they did the IO tiny combo, they had Havost go solo safe lane on the Centaur. So dual lane mid, solo safe lane Havost, maybe an off lane hero for Phonic, then grab a jungler for Puppy as well. We talked about it. It's a bit greedy, but I feel like it might work again in this scenario. If it worked previously, there's a good chance it's going to work again. And as far as jungling options, they did do that first ban on the Enigma. So it's just easy to wager that possibly they consider going with that Enchantress once again. It, Puppy did have a struggle in the early game the last go around with that enchantress but you know the end ring result was the same and puppy did still have a lot to offer and definitely can utilize those neutral creeps very very nicely so expect them to look into grabbing that up for themselves and for arrow gaming i lead to imagine that this could be just ddz playing that naga siren we would love to see the flashy plays coming out from the invoker obviously it's been already banned out and he's not even going to result to going for something like the tinker because it can be relatively easy countered if you do pick it up too early as the banning does progress though 
though, we have Navi going to get rid of that Shadow Demon, and obviously Arrowhead got rid of the extra pushing power coming out from the Pugna. But two heroes I'm not seeing on the field that we've seen very often. Actually, three heroes. No Razor, no Faceless Void, no Skywrath Mage. Yeah, we'll see. What is happening? I mean, it's there's still plenty of time left for these teams to pick it up. Mm -hmm. uh, might see Arrow grab the Skywrath. They've been playing it a lot, even as recently as the last game. The crazy remaining. thing to note is that we talk about how DDZ uh, is such a great invoker player, and we kind of complain that maybe he didn't get a lot of invoker play this tournament, but they've actually picked it a lot, surprisingly enough. I mean, at least more than half of their games look like he's got the invoker in hand, so it's kind of surprising that they grabbed it that much, but they just weren't able to convert and get a win with it, so a bit unfortunate. So now we pick up the Wraith King. Um, this is something that's a bit different. Uh, we'll see if they want to do a dual lane with the Wraith King, and instead of having that like silo safe lane Havos Centaur, but mm -hmm. it's interesting that they decided to go for it. Maybe you can still do the Ion Tiny in the dual lane down potentially like in or in the top lane, Five in the safe lane, and uh, go from there and have a Wraith King somewhere else. But Arrow Gaming are going to pick up Lich, which is actually pretty solid and strong. You think about a Chain Frost up against an Ion Tiny, I think it's mm -hmm. a pretty good ability. And the Frost Armor. And that too. Um, and yeah, the Frost Armor plus the Doom. And if you get like something like a Shiva's Guard, inherently tanky heroes all around, especially the Naga Siren as well. You won't be able to right click her down. She'll have so much armor from her agility that she gets like crazy. You talked about the Razor though, and Navi will pick it up. Yeah. Absolutely, and just to go back on the Doom again, it's just so funny, just thinking about the Doom and the Frost Ember together on a team just Ten brings me back to, like, Eternal Envy when he tried to be, or he didn't try, I mean, it was a successful, innovative Five grab of joining with the Doom, and you also get the Frost Ogre, you get the Shivas and all have you, and you're looking He's at Doom with, like, 30 to 40 armor, yeah, so ridiculous. it was a, a strong utility force that did work very, very nicely. Arrow Gaming, you know, we'll see if it's something that's, like, an ace up their sleeve that they want to roll with right now, and for Navi, they're going to go ahead and counter back they get the primary razor grab and I believe we've seen that in the hands of Dendi as well so this could be either a Dendi tiny or a Dendi razor they could switch it all around that's just one of the great things about Navi and how experienced they are so fluid they can just change things around the lanes players roles on the fly it will be puppies call to make but that's just how they have such great chemistry they could just do it on the fly trust their captain and roll with the punches it's actually interesting this is one of the first games I've seen with Navi having the razor I'm not sure if they picked it before before, but oh, really? Yeah, I, th they, I think they want to experiment. Maybe remaining. they think they can get away with picking a razor up against Arrow here. I'm not sure. The, the fact that they go for the Wraith King and the Razor this so seems tired. kind of greedy, but at the same time, it's really interesting. I, at least in the international, they might pick, have Ten picked it beforehand, remaining. but at least as of right now, I'm not seeing too many Razor picks for them. So five they only have five seconds left of their ban right now, and actually the reserve time getting rather low. Looks like they will ban out the Disruptor. They don't want to deal with that glimpse like you talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty strong up against the Io and the Tiny Combo. Just bringing those guys in. Death Prophet was the pickup for Arrow Gaming, so a bit of push coming out, a bit of team fight. Now you have to wonder where's this Naga Siren going to go? Um, there are people like DK's Burning really loves to send Naga to the safe lane and farm him mm -hmm. up there, but a lot of people have been playing in mid lately. I feel like you have those options. You can send the Death Prophet mid, and I feel like Death Prophet does okay if it's IO Tiny mid, or even a Razor. You just Crypt Swarm. You have, you're pretty fast as well, so you can get away with the static link. You don't have to kind of just take all of that damage loss, so. It's interesting. It's it's very unpredictable. Even for Arrow Gaming, their their players they like to shift things around. All through the qualifiers, we saw Lance play a very dominating core style Doom. But thus far in the tournament, it's been more about uh, Zheng Zai playing the Doom, and it's been he's been having some hot and cold success with the hero, playing him in that off lane, trying to go with some early initiate, getting the blink dagger right away. If I had to just kind of throw out a guess right now as far as the draft for Arrow Gaming, I would say DDZ is one of those players. He likes to play Naga Siren in the mid lane, and then we'll see Lance roll with the safe lane style Death Prophet. Kind of something we also saw from like MVP where you're just going to throw him on the side, let him get the levels early, and just push down those towers on the side. And for this, Navi Finse uh, um, Navi rather, finish it off with the puck. This could just be a funic off lane puck here if they'd like, but. 10 seconds remaining. All these picks, it's it's a bit greedy already, a little bit from both Five of these teams, remaining. and very unpredictable. So it's going to be curious to see how we're going to see this balance out a bit He's right now. Yeah, I don't know. This is kind of strange because we don't usually see Puck played by Funic. It's usually Dendi 90% of the time, but then again, we don't usually see Razor either. Um, and so you don't know who's playing what just yet for Navi. They could still do the dual lane mid with Io Tiny. You could do Wraith King Razor in mm -hmm. the safe lane, and they could off lane Puck. You can send Puck to the mid lane and then do Io Tiny Wraith King, and then 
Well, that's not going to work because Razor Offlane is not that great. You can aggro try, but with an IO, is it really going to be that good? Against, say, I guess the Nagasarn, also kind of difficult. You're going right into a Lich as well as the Naga, which is a lot of damage. So, secondary support probably coming up from Arrow Gaming, unless this Nagasarn is going to be support Naga, which I don't see happening. Yeah. I think you and I both believe that this is going to be probably DDZ mid Naga. But who really knows? The thing is, and the nice thing about picking up so many flexible heroes here, you can kind of just leave it up in the air and then once we see that final pickup snagged then they can decide where they want to put it and just based on already the the people jumping on these heroes it potentially could be an offlane funic puck which yeah. i think i've seen in the past it's been a while but it's been done havos more of a carry style razor and the last grab there from arrow gaming was the shadow shaman one of the heroes has been a top pickup support in the international and it has a very significant win rate i want to wager it's something around 56 to 58 percent so a lot of success for them it is on the radiant side but still a hero that has a lot to offer as far as cc lockdown and heavy pushing power of those wards you put that together with the death prophet you put that together with the naga siren who can farm up and use those illusions and well arrow gaming could try to end this one very quickly yeah absolutely i mean the, the thing is, is though if you don't end the game quickly you always have the naga to fall back on and it's going to be that ddz naga siren so it's kind of interesting to see how Prepare this is going to play battle. out looks like he's going to be going to safe lane too so i'm um, not going to be getting going mid on that naga siren which we see so often like i said out of a lot of the teams in the tournament but yeah i mean right now puppy is probably going to be with uh havost more than likely going to be doing a dual lane somewhere, and then Kuroki and Dendi probably going mid yet again. But against Death Prophet, you can get away with having a solo Death Prophet, but with Johnny here as well on the Lich, it's probably going to be a dual lane with obviously the Sacrifice helping out and the Frost Blast and Crypt Swarm. That's a lot of nuke damage coming through from Arrow Gaming, so it really comes down to positioning, I think, think in that mid lane. Navi are going to smoke up early. They're going to look for a potential pickoff in the jungle. Mosin, as well as ZDZ, are pretty far into the jungle here into the trees on the side. Uh, down in this bottom lane, so they might not be able to catch anyone out of position. For Na'Vi, that dire line, if you have Provost, he'll be up on the Razor. You'll have Dendi on the Tiny. Kuroki will be on the Io. Funic on the Puck, and Puppy will round up the lineup on the Wraith King. And on your Radiant team, we got Arrow Gaming. Unfortunately, this might be the end of the road of their tournament life, but happy to try to put on a strong showing here. We're going to start at the top. We got Zhang Zai on his very familiar Doom in the off lane. Representing your mid, we got Lance, your core style Death Prophet in the mid lane. Right behind him, support Johnny. Going to be representing your Lich along the bottom. The Moses going to be playing your Shadow Shaman. And finally, none other than DDZ, the flashy player himself. He's going to be playing Naga Siren. Yeah, so, I mean... Uh, looks like they will just have Puppy and Havos come down to this bottom lane, and since it's a dual lane, no, actually Funic's gonna stay down here, and they're gonna have Puppy just take this illusion room. He actually might stay down here and just help out Funic, but more than likely he should head top, but it's gonna be a solo safe lane versus a solo off lane, so he can actually just roam around. If he wants to be aggressive, he can help out Funic at this off lane. If he wants to go mid, he certainly can, so it's gonna be about rune control, I think, more so than anything. Uh, DDZ getting farmed here shouldn't be too much of an issue. He only has 46 base damage right now. He's got a stout shield and one GG branch. The mid lane is going to be where the action happens, I think. Uh, Dendi already getting harassed. Taking your Frost Blast, I believe. No. Still level 1 for Giant, so obviously only has that sacrifice. He's going to throw up the Avalanche real quick, but Dendi's still taking right click harass, and actually a lot of it coming up from Lance as he has an early Null Talisman, so. Top lane, it, it's going to be very interesting here. Uh, Shang Tsai going to be going up that crafty veteran Havos, and he has some early, early harassment coming out with the static leak, just trying to show him no respect, not allow him to get too close to get the CS, and I would imagine that Havos is going to take control. But Mosin bottom. about to fall, one right click, but gets blocked in. Puppy can't get it done, might actually turn around and die here to DDZ with the right click. The Aether Shock from Mosin will get the kill. Now the Shack was funny, he can't jaunt away. Now they're going to right click and rip tie. Oh. That's two kills, arrow turn it around. Mosin almost giving away first blood, but stays alive. Wow. So, Arrow, strike first and claim two casualties right off the bat. Navi, well, we saw him last time have a bit of a rough start to, you know, when they rolled with that Tiny Whisk combo, and, well, shades of future past, I guess you could say. Is the Dendi in the mid lane, looking to heal up as he goes against this dual range combo coming out from Arrow Gaming, trying to make it a little difficult for him to get that farm early. And, well, it looks like Doom did abandon up that off lane, looking to move into an aggressive jungle here, and he sees a double camp stack, and that's been courtesy of Kuroki here on the Wisp, and he's yeah. going to just go ahead and grab one up and pull back. Yeah, I mean, he knows this is stack now, but there's not much you can do about it, but... Grabbing at least one creep and just getting out of there is really nice, and he can even just stay in and jungle for a bit, but not with those camps stacked up, so... Uh-oh. Bottom lane, he's hasted. 
Looking for a DDZ, he might find it. DDZ, no mana for any snare. I'm not sure. We'll see if they can grab the kill here. He's still level 1 for the Wraith King, so only level 1 Wraith Fire Blast. Funnick's sitting at level 3 now. He does have the help of Mosin behind him, so DDZ has that support. We'll see if they want to jump on him. I think they're waiting for Mosin to show himself, and they can try to go on him. They know that there's no mana for any snare now for uh, at least a couple of seconds here for Arrow's DDZ. But it looks like Puppy, the haste is gone. Maybe the opportunity gone as well. Uh, there's no Radiant Observer, Observer Ward right now, but Mosin will scout things out by being over here. In fact, Mosin's level 3 on his boots first as well, which gives him so much mobility. Yep, and uh, obviously Navi are going to have to play this one a little more careful. Last time, they tried to get a little too excited, trying to make an initial jump in and kind of stub their toe. So they want to pull back. They don't want to give any more additional kills away. Mid lane harassment here on Dendi. Just more nukes to fly out here from Johnny, converting him very, very low. Only one more Tango of regen here for Dendi to heal up with. And, uh, you know, so far, Arrow, respectfully, doing good in the early laning phase. But we have a long way to go here. It's only three minutes in, still Arrow, two zip right now. We'll see if Denny can try to strike their own first blood. And we made so much uh, talk about that bottom lane, but top lane's going so well for her boat. She's got 19 last hits. Meanwhile, Funnick, nice John away. Really good illusory orb into the face shift, then jaunts away as soon as he realized he was under tower range, and so they couldn't get the ensnare going. They couldn't get the shackles up as well. Mosin needs a point in Hex to really get his disable started, so really nice play from Funnick. Staying alive in this bottom lane, he'll salve up now, but DDZ wants to continue to go. Another illusory orb from Funnick, and another jaunt coming out. Just toying with Mosin and Arrow at this point in time, so... Really good stuff. And again, like I talked about, that top lane going so well for Havos. 23 last hits. Mid lane's going decently as well for Denny. But now, Great Fire Blast. The static link is going to fly. He does have a score strip. He will use the Centaur Conqueror Stomp. And uh, Chunk Side should be okay. But that's 147 damage that's been linked to Havos. He hits like a truck because it's a level 3 static link already. It's so nice. Mm hmm. Mid lane, Lance has been bottle crowing and just trying to duel out that heavy harassment with the Crypt Swarm. And Dyer's unfortunately for Denny, no more regen attack. to work with. As you can see, Fonic conveniently picks up a regeneration rune for himself, quickly jaunts up back to the tower. But yeah, it's already been taken apart. So well, for now, just kind of hold it true. Yeah, but Kuroki's going to help out with the bottle. He'll just tether up and just make sure Denny's back to full for the most part. And and Kuroki's going to be the one to either secure runes or just bottle crow, so shouldn't be too much of an issue. That's Arcane Boots already done for Mosin, and that'll help because he got the first blood, obviously, and they've been involved in two kills, so good stuff there. DDZ getting some nice farm. 16 last hits, he did get the Clawing Blade finally, so it'll be a bit easier to CS as well. Uh, in the jungle, Puppy, as well as Kuroki roaming around. Meanwhile, Frost Blast and Deadly taking a lot of damage. The Crypt Swarm looks like it connected as well, so that's the problem. Once Kuroki goes away, then he kind of just has to deal with all this harass, and he just kind of can't get close and see us. But at the same time, he has all these stacks waiting for him in the jungle. So Yeah, he got one of those stacks that time. The other one did not get... It's quite successful, but still lots of gold to come here if Denny wants to move in there, do that victory combo, and just move that much closer to getting that Agnum Scepter or just a little bit additional mobility. So for right now, relatively quiet stuff happening. Your leader CS is none other than Havos there at the top lane, 36 and 18. Some heavy denies coming out from Havos, making things very difficult for Jing Zion as well. As you can see, 7 and 0 now on his own CS. This Doom needs to build up a lot more farm for himself. Yeah, I mean, right now he's just kind of leeching experience here and trying to get level 6, but he couldn't even go back to his own jungle if he wants to. It's not like they're really using it that much. I mean, Mosin's stacking occasionally, but... Um, there's a stack over here as well, which is going to be nice. I mean, Lance can actually get some of these stacks if he wants with Crypt Swarm and Johnny helping him out as well, but um, I'm not sure. I mean, I feel like Shang Tsai should go to the jungle at some point here and devour and just get some more experience in gold, but it's up to him, really. Mosin's done a very nice job stacking. I mean, if you're a support, this is what you need to do. If you're not in lane getting kills, if you're not pulling, stack. Um, ward. Just be around the map mm -hmm. doing something. Just don't sit in lane, just leech experience. Do something. So... Your six minute rune was on the bottom lane, an invisibility rune that had been picked up once again from Phonic. Very, very close to his level six, and then he'll conveniently be able to use that dream coil and try to get some sort of initiation happening on his own part. But for now, just kind of toying with this bottom lane, but DDZ, man, he's still finding a relative amount of farm. He's getting a lot closer to his own level six. This is going to make things a lot easier for him so that when harassment does come his way, he can just simply press that R button and get out of trouble. Yeah, I, right now, I mean, Funnick's doing a nice job, though, at least uh, harassing a little bit. And Snare is going to fly, but Funnick is in bed. going to throw up the Illusion Orb. The Hex is going to fly as well. Now the Shackle's going through. Funnick just threw up the Illusion Orb, and he didn't need to. There was no detection coming out, but still gets caught out of position, and they get the kill with DDZ's Naga Sirens. So. Don't underestimate the lockdown that Arrow Gaming have on this bottom lane. Mosin already doing a really strong performance here early in the run, and another lockdown performance happening on Funnick. So Funnick 
veteran player of the off lane having a little bit of trouble early on. He does have a respectable amount of levels, but just needs a little bit more for himself. And, you know, obviously he'll look to push forward, get a hold of that Blink Dagger, and then it gets even more troublesome to try to get off that puck. But for now, actually shifts all the way up to the top lane with that Dream Coil. Yeah, he's ready to make a fight happen. Well, the unfortunate thing is Shanksai is actually going back to the base, so he won't really be able to find a target until at least he TPs back up here. So Bunnik's just kind of just sit here for a while and... Dendi and Kuroki are just going to be able to go to the jungle. They can even stack one more time, but looks like they just want to go ahead and take this. Finally, it's going to be a lot of gold going for both Kuroki and Dendi. Kuroki can use the spirits, obviously, to just get some CS here. Make sure that the courier gets out of there. It will, looks like, get some bottle charges and bottle crow, potentially. But now they can actually send Funic mid if they want to, mm -hmm. or even just get him a couple of these last hits, or even the experience coming out. But he's just kind of sitting and roaming around. DDZ is going to get free farm in the bottom lane, that means. Under attack. And we talked about Shang Tsai going to the jungle. He's doing just that. He picks up the gloves of haste, and it looks like he's going to be going for a Midas. Um, at the Dyer's very least, it's going to get there maybe 12, 13 minutes. So Dyer's we'll see how things swing for attack. that Doom in the jungle in a couple minutes. But for right now, the leader of CS is supposed in the top lane. Um, something might be flying out to him. He just purchased it. It looks like it's going to be that buckler and headdress. They're done. So just needs a couple more, uh, a little bit more gold just to purchase up the recipe and then have his mech done ready to go. Plants in the mid lane, reaches level 7, sees that there's an opportunity to pop out the exorcism and will begin laying in the heavy damage on this mid tier 1 tower and there is no Na'Vi at the moment to try to defend it out unless there will be a TP to come here as Dendi and Kuroki back to the base. Kuroki obviously not level 6 just yet, cannot simply ro relocate in, but for now, three parked here in the mid lane for the side of Arrow and they're looking to take their first structure. Yeah, and looks like they will grab it, but while that's happening though in the bottom lane, Lotus is already level 6, putting in the Super Wars, but look at this mad team rotation, Dendi jumps in, gets the combo, but the Hex up immediately, Moses will fall, the Tether coming through as well, Avos looking for DDZ, he's got Song of the Siren, he probably won't have to use it though, they'll get the tower it looks like, and uh, that means that, well, they'll lose the life of Mosin, and now that's a bit a bit problematic, but still, a pretty good trade for Arrow, Yeah, when it's all said and done. It's one support, and they've gotten two tier 1 towers now, and that's a lot of gold going the way of especially DDZ, so he could start building towards that sweet relic. 2,700 gold yeah, he's, for DDZ. He's actually pretty farmed, surprisingly it's enough. Really the nice. Ring of Akila, too. Um, and this stack is going to help a long way as well, so uh, Ibushak could go through another Riptide that'll give him some more CS, but yeah, they're, they're just going to go down methodically, take down these stacks in the jungle, and go from there. Um, and a lot of the farm that Death Prophet's getting is just going to be from mid, so he won't take any of these jungle stacks, or at least he'll help out by throwing a quick Crypt Swarm or two, but stack up instead. In the top lane, Shang Tsai getting some more room here. Something's flying out to him, maybe a TP scroll. Poke time, bottom lane, Navi. I'm just be gonna pop it out, and Havos gotta take the long road around, it looks like, but for Puppy and Funix, they're gonna shift all the way right through the jungle here. Mosin, just on the outskirts, has to be cautious. The smoke will be popped, they go and they pop the coil immediately, but there's DDZ with the song. A rotation to come, are they gonna look to send this one back in their face? It's gonna be Lance to show up here. Lance, seven more seconds for Exorcism. They're happy to throw out the Crypt Swarm. One more auto attack, Puppy very low, and obviously not level six, will fall, and they're gonna go for fun Funic as well. It might have a two for one, nope. Havost, right there from behind, pulls out the Eye of the Storm. Look at the clean house. A two for one at the moment as Lance makes Dying his retreat and will be able to get away. Attack. Yeah, DDZ and Mosin getting caught in the position. Funny with a really well-timed phase shift to avoid the Crypt Swarm. Stays alive. He was getting chased down, but excellent play from the offlaner of Na'Vi and getting those kills. Stopping DDZ's farm is very important. While that's all happening, uh, Actually, Shang Tsai received his Radiant Midas, and that was from the two Tier 1 towers. They got one in the mid lane, one in that down bottom lane with CDZ helping out as well. So um, now, actually, now they're going to try to put some pressure on this Tier 1 tower. TP rotation coming through. It is CDZ. No song this time around. He needs help. He can't do this alone. He's just going to throw his illusions out. Havos, not really deterred. Uh -oh, Illusion relocate. Him immediately, but relocate top lane. Now, Shang Tsai in a lot of trouble. The nuke damage is very real, and the toss and avalanche getting it done for Dendi. So. Unfortunately for Arrow, that is something to keep an eye on. Kuroki hit level 6, and it was just time to go, and that's pretty much the Navi way here. Kuroki does show back up to the mid lane. They didn't even have a tower to help him out, so had they seen him come in, actually they're still wanted here. The little ball trying to escape right now, and there's nothing to tether to. Throw out the crypt, but it will miss, but doesn't matter. Zap, and the ball will fall. So Kuroki will go down, and Arrow still ahead as far as kills. 5-4 to four your score, but Navi... Doing very, very nice. Denny getting that much closer to that set of drums. He's got the recipe already completed as he does continue to farm out in his own jungle. Look at this. They drop the wards in the mid lane. Yeah. These are going to be swiftly farmed they're up. Just, so. They're just saying hi, man. That's yeah, it. Just, just so. a brief chip. Small wave. Yeah, I mean, uh, just casual throw the serpent wards down. And get some, like you said, chip damage on the tower. But 
I mean, I mean, if I was Navi here, I'm feeling pretty confident. Havos is level 11, he's got his mech now. Um, Dendi's relocated once, I believe, and they've gotten a couple of kills with him as well. So um, they've been successful around the map, just getting kills, essentially. It's still 5-4. to four. Yes, Error farming with DDZ and the Naga Siren, but I mean, you have relocate. You can just kind of jump into the jungle at any point mm -hmm. in time, with, and especially with the low cooldown or the high cooldown, rather, on Song of the Siren. DDZ just might get caught in the position and won't be able to escape, so we'll see how things go for Dendi and Kuroki. You know, that's on the supports now on the side of Arrow to make sure they have sentries down, make sure that Navi don't have that vision, any aggressive wards that Navi might put out to allow them to relocate in and catch anyone out by their solo. So, Or you can just simply stay together. That way, when you see the relocate come your way, Radiant. you can you can try your best to either get away, prevent it, or counter attack back. Now, top lane, Lance pushing forth an illusion, trying to add a little extra damage to that top tower while Anxiety is nearby. But they're going to rotate to the mid lane here, where it looks like Dendi might potentially be caught out, but nope. Swiftly pulled back here. Looks like they will not engage. They had no lockdown, and Dendi's just like, yeah, that hurts, but you're, you're not really going to be able to kill me, so it's mm -hmm. fine. In fact, they're still saying this mid lane. I do like the fact that Arrow has a lot of really good wards already. I mean, you have your standard ancient ward here, but you also have the ward coming out uh, on the backside in that mid lane. But Navi are making to, they're looking to make a go on this top lane, this tier one tower. Again, it's not that important. It's not that big of a deal if this tower falls, the tier one in the off lane, but Arrow would like to defend it, especially because they have everyone rotating over. They have Doom, which they haven't used all game. Mosin's here as well, Johnny on top of that, but Phonic is doing a nice job pushing the back, and the tower will fall without any contention. So, Jake's is kind of one of those support players, especially when he plays the Doom, that he's very patient with using the ultimate. Maybe almost too patient at times before he likes to get it out there, but maybe they should consider going a little more on the aggressive. The longer this game goes, the longer they, you know, don't make a move to try to take down this heavy assault that Dendi could bring, it, it can get more of a struggle for him. And as you see, Dendi already acquiring his point booster and nearly 700 gold. Next thing you know, he's going to be holding that big weeping willow and bringing the pain. Especially if they have another fight like they did in the Liquid game. Just get, somehow gets like an ultra kill or something ridiculous that only Dendi can do. So, I mean, I expect to see the pressure come pretty soon. Like we talked about, the relocate is there. Um, if Puppy can get a Blink Dagger anytime soon, that'd be huge, but he's still only a stretch at this point. He does have Reincarnation, which is really nice, so the supports of Navi are, are starting to do pretty well. We talked about Kroki getting level 6. In the top lane, the Luzuro is going to fly out. Funnick thinking about jumping in, waiting rift misses, but he does get the Dream Pro off. Now the relocate on top. Funnick is going to be doomed here, but now Mosin gets blown up by the combo. The Chain Frost, Kuroki is bouncing between them. He will fall, but it's a 2 for 1 trade. They're still chasing Shang Tsai. Actually get another kill. That's Funnick now, Static Link going through. Dendi has Toss ready to go if he wants to toss the boat on top of him, but now the TP coming through. There it goes, the boat man loading it up. He wants to fight. Now the exorcism coming in, but Shang Tsai will fall, and Havos gets the double oh, kill. No. Puppy still low, but it doesn't matter. Triple kill for Havos. This is exactly what I was talking about. Navi getting an absolutely outstanding fight. That is just, I mean, they lose Kuroki, but it's just merely the vehicle to allow the rest of his Navi squad to push forward and get kills like that. Havos just not letting up on the Doom, sapping away all the way up to plus 200 damage with the assistance of Dendi throwing him into the fight, and Lance just shows up, and unfortunately by then, the damage has been done, and he is just another victim. Tier 2 will fall. Here comes a the rotation. They actually stunned. DDZ, what are you doing? Might be caught out. He does kick down one, but for his own life, at that point, it is just... It's not worth it. Look at this. War Trap actually on Havos. They, they lock him in place. Johnny as well trying to lay out the right clicks, but Havos is like, just get the heck out of here. I'm going to leave. Retreats to the north. There is nothing you can do. I don't even have to use my mech, but I will now. He actually had no mana for it. He sticked up, and then he's like, all right, now I'll use the uh. mech. So um, it was kind of a close call, but Dendi was there to help him out, and that was... I don't say this a lot, but that was kind of questionable from DDZ. He's just like, yeah, I'm just going to keep it to the top lane and we'll see what happens. So he didn't use his song. It, it seemed like he really wanted to kill Dendi, so he decided to defer and kind of just hope that he could rip tide him down or something. But again, this is like the same exact timing as the last game. It's like 16 minutes and like Dendi's farming okay, but then all of a sudden they fight and they get two components and almost his third is done in yeah. that Aghanim Scepter. And this is where it gets tricky for Arrow. Really tricky. I mean... They have a long way to go before they can even get to the point where they can consider contesting the onslaught that's going to be coming their way from this tiny whiz combo. Oh, yeah. 
it, it, it's rough. We're going to try to be very optimistic about this one, though, as Aero Gaming, very much the underdogs coming into this matchup. The backs have been against the wall pretty much the whole tournament, but we're rooting for them. They're the underdogs. We want to hope they can pull it back out as four of them squat here in the mid lane. They do have a Death Prophet. I mean, the next goal has got to be let's move on maybe potentially this top lane. There's a Tier 1 still standing. If we got to use an Exorcism as a set of wards, let's just get it down. Let's get in a little bit more gold to work with here. Let's bring that over to DZZ so he can get more. He already has the Radiance complete, but he needs to get a hold of maybe some boots of travel so he can have extra mobility, get around the map, and find the farm that he so desperately will need. I feel like Arrow just needed to not farm until the Death Prophet was level 2 ultimate, like level 11, or DVZ had a decent bit of farm. Yes, he's got the Naga Siren Radiance, but I feel like he needs a bit more than that. And they gave way too many kills up there. So Dandy gets his Aghanim Scepter again so early on. They can even think about Roaching. They've smoked up as well. Puppy's going to lead the way. He has his Wraith Fire Blast at the ready. No Blink Dagger, but he's got Reincarnation, and he hasn't used it all game. Now another smoke from Arrow. They're looking to maybe find somebody in the mid lane. It actually might be Havost. It's going to be a tough target to take down. They have the Rod of Atos in the Death Prophet. They might even use it. There it goes. Unstable. Current actually helps out. They doom him up, however, but still in trouble. Havost might get away. Big Dream Crawl coming in to relocate Mosin. Blown up again. The Chain Frost. Bounce between a couple of heroes. Fun and getting low, as well as Dendi. No. Dendi still whacking away. Puppy actually was the one to go down with the Reincarnation. Oh, and that's an Ultra Kill with a couple of swipes. They didn't even know that he had the Aghanim Scepter, and he used it to great effect. Tony. Dondo, please. Looking for more. Need to see the top lane. Desperately sings the song of mercy as he tries to make his way back to the base and will successfully get out. But as it shows, nobody is safe when Dendi is on this time. Just an Aghanim Scepter on Havos. Where are these items coming from? Well, I guess when you get an Ultra Kill, that'll do that. Or you know, so and another tower. Answer my own question. 2,000 gold in the bank right now for the Razor, sitting on level 14. And if you're Arrow right now, or you're an Arrow fan, you, you got to be feeling a bit bad. But Navi, they they they're playing so well. They had a couple of missteps early on, but Phoenix had some great Dream Coil initiations, and then just the follow-up. Just it seems like they're just outclassing Arrow at this point, and they they played so much Dota that. At this point, how could you not? So I mean, it looked like Arrow felt they had the opportunity to make the jump on Havos, even using the silence on him solely, but by the time the reinforcements came in, there was just nothing else to offer, and they just kind of cleaned house, and yeah. it just got ugly real quick, and for Arrow... It's going to be on them to try to shake it off and try to come right back into this one. As far as looking at their dark horse of their team, DDZ, Radiance on hand actually just spent his gold here, and it looks like he does have the boots to travel now complete. So hopefully he can avoid any incoming danger, any incoming relocates, find that farm, and keep on going. But we're only about 20 minutes in, 14 to 9, your score. I don't even know if I want to look at this gold graph, and yep, it has yep. dipped, and it continues to do so. Past the 5k mark right now for Navi. Definitely a testament to all these towers they've already brought down. Yeah, absolutely. And for DDZ, he just needs to hit creeps. That's what he needs to do. He just needs to go into the jungle or go into the nether lane and just hit creeps. And with the boots of travel, he can do just that. It's actually on cooldown now, but he doesn't seem to mind too much. And, uh, this actually might be an opening for him to go for the tier 1 tower, because now they're going for Roshan. If an Aegis on either Dendi or Havos, that's just too much to deal with. You know, a second life from this tiny who already has 2k um, health. He's got, what, almost 21 armor. Where does Dendi get all this gold? Is he, like, reaching into his grandma's inheritance fund or something? It's just, every time I look over, he's got new items, a whole new set of gold. I mean, don't get me wrong, he just dominated that last team fight, but it's very clear this experienced team, they know how to move around the map, they know how to find the farm and get it very, very quickly now. Roche will fall, Aegis required, Navi happy to sacrifice one measly tier 1 tower in the top lane and consider pushing down the mid of Arrow. It's just like they have an agreement with the other team or even Ice Frog. It's just like, okay, we'll let you guys have the landing stage, but when we get relocate, we're going to start killing everybody and that's where our gold is going to come from. So, um, Navi are certainly pushing the pace of this game and it's their game to take now. I mean, Arrow can get back into it with a farm Naga. Yes, we've seen it before. I mean, how many times have we seen Burning or even, as of recently, Snaking do something crazy with this hero? But you're a long way away from that. DDZ's done a nice job, though. He's got the most CS, and he should. 181 at 21 minutes is nothing to scoff Dyer's at, but he needs a lot more. Dendi in the bottom lane continues to go on this tier 2 tower. Brookie is here to help out. His Assault Jaras is very close to being completed. In fact, he gets the Hyper Sony. just needs the Chainmail now. And then you get the armor reduction, plus the overcharge, plus the increased speed. And next thing you know, you got no more outer towers. And, uh, well, for Arrow Gaming, this is the nightmare when you do have a Naga. I mean, when you're putting all of your eggs in the Naga basket, 
Uh, that's pretty much what happens. Now, as far as moving outside the base and finding farm, there are very limited options. Very limited options. But you're going to be giving all that to DDZ. So what happens to everyone else? Where's our farm going to be? You pray. You're like, DDZ, please yeah, deliver us this game. Hopefully we can get a team fight, push forward, use the benefit of all of our push, like and try to take some powers. It's just, yeah, please, <laughs> leave yeah. some scraps for us. DDZ, just give us anything. We'll take anything. But you, don't, you can't blame him because he is going to be the forefront as, as far as damage. So they're going to try their best. DDZ's finding the farm. He's doing it very aggressively on the Navi side. They're nowhere near this area for now. But while they're not there, they're elsewhere. Finding additional farm. Farming up their own cores. I mean, you may have one Naga, but we got a big old Tony with heavy damage. We got Razor building up more. Agnum's complete ultimate orb on hand. He's already had that Midas. Even Phonic building up his own arsenal. He's got his Blink Dagger with the heavy initiation. It's... It's looking pretty rough right now for yeah. Arrow Gaming. Yeah, Hobos actually just completed up his uh, Lincoln Sphere. It's getting flown out to him right now as he picks up the Perseverance at the Secret Shop, and, and they'll go from there. So, and Navi are just like, okay, well, I mean, we have an Aegis, we have an Assault Curas, we have the Aghanim Scepter on our Razor at 22 minutes in. There's nothing we can really wait for. We, we don't need to wait. DDZ is only going to get more farmed at this point. Um... You can get some more map control, put some wards down in the enemy jungle, but at this point, there's no more objectives to take other than a tier 3 tower. Try to get a pick off potentially, but there's no way you're going to do that if Naga still has songs, so... Um, but DDZ is playing this so well, cutting up the creep waves with his illusions. You'll see this a lot. DDZ is just going to make illusions, mirror images, and just cut all these creep waves off in the mid lane if he can. It's not about the split pushing, it's more so about cutting off the creep waves. But as that happens, Dendi and her bow are here in the mid lane. Oh this tier 3 tower is melting. There's the Song of the Siren, it's going to go. What's going to happen next is the question. Dendi, the battering ram style build, just moves on in. They cl easily clear out this tier 3. And with the help of the bows, Eye of the Storm, they're ripping apart one set of racks. Here goes the wards. This might be the all or nothing right now for Arrow Gaming. They push on forward. They hex up Dendi and Doom him. He makes his retreat out. The coil on the return, and now they're looking to go right back into the Arrow base. Unmerciful as they push forward. Doom meets big damage. Dendi, though, going to be locked down temporarily. The chain frost flying back and forth. Doom will fall. Dendi looking to smack and get a lot more taken down. Only one casualty thus far. Puppy very low, but that's the reincarnate simply popping out right now. Pavost cleans up the rest of the towers and they shift all the way to the bottom and look at him go swat 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 just taking him right to that tier three tower and well for the rest of arrow gaming just simply trying to nuke them down and please have mercy on our base sir and they can't the second set of racks will crumble and about 24 minutes in it looks like arrow gaming might consider throwing up the white flag crookie is so damn good he just tethers dendy even if dendy's doom and sitting on like one third of his hp he just regens him up just like yeah i'll throw an urn charge on you they throw up the mech as well from uh, Hobos, and they just keep going. They're gonna get mega creeps now. Dendi is still at full HP. Hobos still has the Aegis puppy. He just used the reincarnation. That's really the only ability they've used that is any, that, that big of a deal at this point. Hobos is just like, please kill me. I want my second life. Bows in. Well, speaking of killing somebody, he is dead. Dendi just hit him once with a club to the back of the head. The baseball bat, if you will. DDZ makes the illusions coming through. Dendi's just like, nope, get those out of here. Hobos still with the Aegis, doesn't really care if he dies. He's just running at people right now. And this is going to be Mega Creep, so both so low, but it doesn't even matter. This is just pure outplay, and that's the GG coming in. After the attrition coming through from Navi, you have to just succumb to this. It's just too much, and sublime play coming up from the side of the European squad. But for Arrow, yet another loss to this. Very disheartening. I mean, I, I am personally a big Arrow fanboy. I'm happy that they've been able to get a couple of wins under their belt, but it's been a struggle since then and even before. And, you know, hopefully, maybe they could still look to put on a strong performance. I know they probably have another couple of games to come, perhaps, but we're getting ready to...